Hello again. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, and turn in your King James scriptures to Revelation chapter 16. <clears throat> I was asked a question this morning, and it was a very interesting question. Um, and it has to do with Revelation chapter 16, Verse 3, go there in the King James Scriptures, the true and real Scriptures. Follow me along, okay? Verse 3 in Revelation chapter 16. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. Now the question I was asked was, is it possible that in the time of Jacob's trouble, could men go to live like under the ocean or in the sea? And um, I guess you could say, uh, I'll say on the outset, you know, that makes sense, doesn't it? Because remember, during the time of Jacob's trouble, that is the time of Jacob's trouble. And all hell is going to be breaking loose on the earth because of God's wrath. God's wrath is going to be poured on the earth for seven years. Okay? Seven years of God's wrath upon the earth. Okay? And during that time, the Antichrist is going to be um, have his one world government the mark of the beast is going to be set up, okay? It's going to be quite a um, horrific time. But see, you and I, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, are not going to be there, okay? We're not. We're going to be caught up, resurrected before any of this happens. So knowing that, brethren, when we, the church of the living God, try to try to make sense of a lot of the book of Revelation, you got to remember, we're not going to be here for a lot of this. So it's okay if you have, and you're like, hmm. Huh. But when you, when you think about it, like I said, all kinds of chaos and hell is going to be breaking uh, loose on the earth. So it kind of makes sense, doesn't it, that people will go to live underneath the sea or in the oceans, right? Let's read this in a little bit more of a context, though, okay? Let's read on to verse 7 in Revelation chapter 16, verses 1 on to verse 7, okay? And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways, and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men, upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. Yeah. Uh, here in verse 14, in chapter 14, you learn if you take the mark of the beast, which all this stuff, the face mask, the social distancing, cash being made to be obsolete, okay, all that is mental preparation preparing the lost to take the mark of the beast, which will be implemented right away once we're resurrected, caught up, okay? That's all it is. But, you see here in chapter 16, verse 2, And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. I think this leads on to your body rejecting it. I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm open to discussion on that. Verse 3. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of, dead, of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. 
And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shalt be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. So, is it possible that someone could be, that men, because of all the chaos that's going on, will go into the oceans, into the sea, to try to hide and escape? Yes, I believe that is possible. But something here that uh, the brother who asked me this, in verse 3, where it says, And every living soul died. Man is comprised of three. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? You have a body. Your skin suit. <laughs> Boy, was I attacked for that one. <laughs> but yes, the skin suit, the sagging skin suit. Okay? You have a spirit. The spirit of man, if you are saved and born again, you have the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is that spirit dwelling within you, and you have a soul. Okay, The Godhead is spirit, soul, and body. Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, the skin suit, if you will. Oh, attack that one all day. Go ahead. But the Word made flesh, the body, Jesus Christ. Okay? The Spirit is the Holy Ghost, the soul of the Godhead is the Father, and the body is Jesus Christ, the skin suit. Okay? Spirit, soul, and body. That's why Jesus Christ is God the Father. Okay? Okay? Get it? Not your head. But it says here, and every living soul died. Now, brethren, sisters, I want to break something to you. Here's Zena. Zena, come here. Come here, Zena. Come here. Come here, little girl. Come here, Zena. Come here. Come here. I want to show you something. Come here, Zena. Come here, Zena. Come here, Zena. Come here. Say hello to everybody on YouTube. <laughs> this is my dog, Zena. Hi, Zena. Look at the camera. Say hello to everybody. <laughs> this is Zena, our dog, Zena. You look good, girl, Zena dog. Yes. You know what Zena doesn't have? A soul. Zena has a spirit and a body. Not a soul. Your cat, my cat Fritz, is asleep in the bedroom. Your oxen, your sheep, your horse. They have a spirit and a body, but they don't have a soul. I'll prove that to you. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Verse... Verses, oh, let's see, 19, under verse 22. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 19, under verse 22. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth them. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. Okay, I'm going to die. You're going to die. Zena's going to die. Fritz is going to die. Your pet, your animal, is going to die. Okay? As the one dies, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man hath no preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity. Meaning that we're all going to die. You're going to die. I'm going to die. Hey, 
Where are you going when you die? Purgatory? <laughs> Where are you going when you die? Do you know that you can know where you're going when you die? There's only two places. You're going to either die and go and be with the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, or you're going to go to hell. There ain't no middle ground, see. But let's continue. All go on to one place. All are of the dust, and all turn to dust again. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? Spirit of the beast. You search the scriptures. Find one place that even hints that an animal, a beast, has a soul. I'll save you the trouble. You're not going to find it. Animals, beasts, have a body and a spirit. They don't have a soul. You and me, man, we have a soul because we're made in the image of God. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Get it? So, but now, there again, going back to about men hiding themselves in the time of Jacob's trouble. Like I said, yeah, it's possible. We don't really know because we're not going to be here. We're going to be up there with ringside seats watching and all. But yeah. Um, I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, it's more than possible, yes. But we have to remember something, brethren. Go to Psalm 90. Psalm 90, because, and praise the Lord for our beloved brother Alexander Hartley, which we, we know anyway, but praise the Lord for uh, what the Lord gave him. Um... Psalms are not chapters. There are not chapters in the book of Psalms. They are Psalms, individual. Praise the Lord. Psalm 90, verse 8. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. In the light of thy countenance. What, some of you think that God doesn't see you? You don't think God sees? Here, here's, a real, here's a real smoke and gun one, if you will. Psalm 139, Psalm 139, come on, fingers, work with me, Psalm 139, verses 7 on to verse 12, okay, about guys hiding uh, in the sea during the time of Jacob's trouble, or also you think you're hiding something from the Lord. You may be lost. You may be of the church of the living God. Psalm 139, verses 7, on to verse 12. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? Note that's a lowercase s there. If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of this sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. 
Let's keep reading. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness as the light, the darkness and the light, excuse me, are both alike to thee. not going to hide anything from the Lord. No one's going to be able to hide. Especially if you are one who goes through the time of Jacob's trouble, you're not going to hide. There's going to be no escape. <laughs> okay? You're going to, uh, you get saved during that time period. Okay? You can't take the mark of the beast, okay? And you got to keep the commandments. Faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. You take that mark, you're done for. And you're going to have to be on the run. You might have, find a place to hide for a little while, but the Antichrist is going to be hounding you. There ain't going to be no place to hide. Psalm, uh, Proverbs 15. Verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Let's read that again. Sorry, I just got a notification. The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. <laughs> Some of you think that the Lord doesn't see you. Or you think you're pulling one over on the Lord. And we, the church of the living God, the body of Christ, we're going to stand at the judgments and, well, excuse me, we're going to be <laughs> face down at the judgment seat of Christ. And our works are going to be judged for our rewards, not our salvation. The great white throne of judgment. Everything is going to be brought to your attention and you're going to be cast off into the lake of fire. Why not get saved today? Or are you too good and you think you can save yourself by pushing a peanut up a hill or something, right? Right. Right. Finally on that, Oh, no, not finally, excuse me. Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. Come on, fingers work with me. There we go. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 23, on to verse 29. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 23, on to verse 29. We begin. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Sees everything. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? I have heard what the prophets said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Be careful of those who have dreams. And add to the scriptures with those dreams that are contrary to the scriptures. <laughs> Beware of that. How long shall this be in thine heart? Ah, excuse me. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets? 
that prophesy lies. Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forsaken, have forgotten my name for Baal. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell, the, tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat? saith the Lord. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Let's keep reading to verse 32. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He saith. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies, and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you false prophets out there. Yeah. You you don't think the Lord sees you? You don't think the Lord sees? See, brethren, the point is during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's going to be so hellacious. It's going to be so catastrophic, so chaotic, that people are going to do whatever they can to get away from it, and there ain't going to be any escape. Okay? The 144,000 sealed Jews, that's a different story, because they are the sealed Jews, the 144,000, which are not the Jehos. Okay? That's a different thing. But during that time, people can get saved. And once they get saved... They can't take the mark. You take the mark, you're done for. And you're going to be on the run. It's going to be a time of constant running until the Lord Jesus comes back with us, the Church of the Living God, the body of Christ, His saints. There's going to be no place to hide in the time of Jacob's trouble. Why not get saved today? Repent of yourself. Repent on, of yourself. Come to the Lord as a broken, contrite sinner. Believe what He did for you. Believe on Him and call on His name. Call on Him. See, because when you call upon the name of the Lord, you're giving the ultimate shoe of humility. Or if you just make a one second decision in your head, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, oh, I'm safe now. Nonsense. Nonsense. Call on his name. Humble yourself for the Lord. One more stop in Amos chapter 9. Amos chapter 9. Amos chapter 9 is one of the best chapters of Scripture if anyone really wants to debate with you about replacement theology, um, especially verses 11 on to verse 15 in Amos chapter 9. Um, that's, you take them to there. Take them to Amos chapter 9, verses 11 on to verse 15, especially. Okay? But Amos chapter 9, verses oh, 1 through 4. Amos chapter 9, verses 1 through 4. I saw the Lord standing upon the altar. And he said, Smite the lintel of the door, that the posts may shake. 
and cut them in the head, all of them, and I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away. And he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. Though they dig into hell, thence shall mine hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence will I command the serpent, and he shall bite them. And though they go into captivity before their enemies, thence will I command, my, command the sword, and it shall slay them. And I will set mine eyes upon them for evil, not for good. So yes, while I can, obviously it makes sense to see that people during the time of Jacob's trouble will attempt to hide in the ocean sea. But I uh, just showed you, vanity of vanity, said the preacher. Vanity of vanity. All is vanity. It's not going to, it's going to avail you nothing. You need to get saved if you're lost. You need to humble yourself. You need to repent of your self-righteousness, thinking you're a good person. Oh, you know you're a sinner, right? But you're not as bad as so-and-so. You're self-righteous. You need to come to the Lord as a broken, contrite sinner. Believe on Him what He did for you on the cross and call on His name. Call upon the Lord. And He will save you. He will save you. And those of you, my enemies, who like to dispute that, A little proud of yourself still, are you, huh? You too good to call on the name of the Lord to be saved, huh? Yeah. Good luck standing at the great white throne of judgment. Poor creatures, you. Anyway, I just, I wanted to make a video addressing this question. Um, I found it very interesting, and I like interesting questions, so. Anyway, that's it for this video. I may have another video to do, but I got a few uh, things to attend to in the house at the moment, or the apartment, beg your pardon. But uh, anyway, I love you. Thank you, brethren, sisters, praying for you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Stop.